gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Miss Brianne, and welcome back to our Let's Get Ready series. The series that is for children from preschool all the way to third grade, and it's all designed how to, how to refresh the skills they need in order to be successful in the upcoming grades. And like I said, this is from preschool all the way to third grade. And you'll be learning things like reading skills, handwriting, motor skills, your letters, phonemic awareness, and all that fun stuff. Now this session is for our kindergarten students who are going to be preparing to go into first grade, as well as for our first grade students who maybe just want a refresher on what they've learned in the previous year. Now we got a fun little activity that help, will help you remember your letters, capital and lowercase, and we're going to be doing that a little later. But first, I'm going to be reading a couple of books. Now, as I as previous, where we read simple picture books with like one or like few words up to one sentence, so that way you don't, it's easy to follow along, easy to read. You can repeat the sight words, and the, the words are very easy to sound out if you know your letter sounds. I mean, we're going to diverge a little bit. Um, the first book is going to be a wordless picture book. Now, many I know many of you want to read books with words, but I thought this would be a fun little... A fun little diversion just for today and it's very detailed and you can describe what's happening but the book is called do you want to be my friend and like I say it's nice to take a little break every now and again from words and just tell the story as you see it in the pictures it's a little bit relaxing don't you think boys and girls and parents, it's nice to give your child a, a break every now and again. But here we go. Let me see. So the book is Do You Want to Be My Friend? The author and illustrator is Eric Carl. Now the author is the person who writes the words of the story. And the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures in the story. And Eric Carl did both. And the public, now we have the publisher, which is that company that puts the books together into print and then sends them to bookstores to sell. And the publisher here is HarperCollins Children's Books, which is a division of HarperCollins Publishers. With that being said, are we ready to begin? All right, here we go. So what does it look like? It looks like it's out on a field, right, with grass. And it looks like there's a little mouse. And he's talking to another animal. Or do you think... Could it be an animal? What do you think, boys and girls? Who thinks it's an animal? Who thinks it may be a person? Well, if it's an animal, it's got to have a tail. It looks like it may have a tail, right? Take a minute to think about animals with tails. Who do you think it could be? Well, in any event, the mouse says, do you want to be my friend? Repeat that with me, boys and girls. Do you want to be my friend? It's going to be, that's going to, sense will happen a lot in this story. So read along with me if you can, boys and girls. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, that tail. 
tail belongs to a horse. Who gets the horse? And what's the horse doing? Looks like the horse is eating grass. Looks like the mouse isn't interested anymore. Oh, but it looks like in the, he's walking along and he sees something else. What do you think it is, boys and girls? Looks like another tail. See what happens. And it looks like that tail. Who thought this was grass, boys and girls? I thought it was grass, but it looks like this tail belongs to a bird which was sitting on the tail of an alligator. Who would have thought that was an alligator tail, huh? And it looks like there's another tail. Who do you think that, what's it look like the alligator is doing? What do you think, boys and girls? Looks like he's trying to eat the tail. Who do you think that tail belongs to? Well, looks like it's the tail of a lion. How, what does the mouse look to you? Do you think he looks scared? Probably. But oh, he spots another tail. And it looks like he, it looks like he actually looks like he's happy because he sees another tail. Who do you what do you think who do you think that tail belongs to? Well, looks like it's going to be the tail. Looks like of a looks like it's a hippopotamus. That's he's big, isn't he? But it looks like the mouse is after what looks like fins. Fins? What do you think, boys and girls? Do you think it's fins or a tail? Where do you think animals with fins got live? In the water, right? Well, that's true for sometimes, unless you're a seal. Seals can live, can hang out in the water and out of the water. But it looks like the mouse is interested in another tail. Who do you think this tail belongs to? Well, looks like it could be the tail. I think that's a monkey. But look, the mouse is interested in this very pretty looking tail here. What animal do you think that who, do you think that tail belongs to, boys and girls? What do you think? Well, that is the tail 
of a peacock. Peacocks have those very pretty feather tails, right boys and girls? But it doesn't look like the mouse is interested in the peacock anymore. He's looking at another tail. What animal does that tail belong to, boys and girls? Well, it looks like it's the tail of a fox. But it looks like the mouse is hopping on to take a ride on another tail. Or could it be a tail? Maybe, maybe not. What do you think it may be, boys and girls? Could it be like a tree branch or a stick or something? Well, if you think it's the tail of an animal, you're right because it's the tail of a kangaroo with her little baby in the pouch. Think a baby kangaroo would be fun to have a, be a good friend, boys and girls, and have fun with the mouse? but the mouse doesn't seem interested anymore. He's interested in another tail. Who do you think that tail belongs to, boys and girls? Well, it is the tail of a very long-necked, Giraffe. Look how tall that is. But it doesn't look like the mouse is interested anymore. He's interested in another tail. Or could it be a piece of string? What do you think, boys and girls? Is it a tail? Or is it something else? Also, have you been taking a look at the grass, boys and girls? Does it look like ordinary grass to you? What do you think? Who thinks yes? Who thinks no? Well, the grass isn't really grass, but looks like it's part of another animal. Because look at how look how the grass goes now. Whoa! And that tail was actually the tail of another mouse who says yes. So that original question, do you want to be my friend? Looks like it wasn't with all the other animals. It looks like he was asking the other mouse all along. Crazy, huh? But let's take a guess. What do you think this large ad green animal is? What do you think, boys and girls? I don't know. Looks like it's looping around. But it looks like the two mice are having fun playing hide and seek, huh? And there's a caterpillar on the tree. It's all good. Well, you can see there's like curls around the green animal now. What do you think it is? It looks like that animal is a snake. 
a long, large green snake. Looks like he's looking at something. What do you think he's looking for? Think he's looking for those two mice? Well, I'm not sure if he's going to find them because they are tucked safely away from a hole they dug in the tree. So that snake can't get to them. And that is the end of the story. So what did you think, boys and girls? Was that a great story? Was it what you expected it to be? Did you think he'd find another mouse for a friend? Or did you think one of the other animals would be a friend? And did you expect a snake at the end? I didn't expect a snake, did you? Well, that was a great story. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like that story, I actually have another Eric Carl story for you boys and girls. And I chose the theme because they are, si they are book simple books that are very popular among kindergarten and first grade students, but also to celebrate the life of Eric Carl who recently passed away. But, this Eric Carle book is not really a picture book, but it's more of an easy reader series, which, it, which is called, which is called the Ready to Read series. And this Eric Carle Carl book is called Have You Seen My Cat? Now this is a very simple book. It's going to have repetitive sentences and simple words. So after the first few pages I read, you'll be able to read along with me, boys and girls. But the, this is Have You Seen My Cat? The author and illustrator is Eric Carl, and this is part of the Ready to Read series, which is published by Simon Spotlight, which is a division of the si which is an imprint of the Simon and Schuster Children's Publishing Division. With that being said, are we ready to begin? All right, here we go. So we have a boy. Looks like he's looking for something, and he's asking an adult. Have you seen my cat? All right, everybody read along with me. Have you seen my cat? That sentence is going to be coming up a lot, boys and girls. And it looks like the adult is pointing towards something. Could it be his cat? Well, let's see. Looks like he's come across a lion, which is a pretty big cat. And the boy says, this is not my cat. That's also a sentence that's going to be coming a lot, up a lot, boys and girls. So repeat it along with me. This is not my cat. Oh, now it looks like he's asking a cowboy on the horse. Have you seen my cat? It looks like the cowboy's pointing to something. Could it be his cat? 
Or can it be another cat? Let's see. Oh, that's a pretty big cat. That is a bobcat. Too big for a regular cat, right boys and girls? So everybody, this is not my cat. Now it looks like he's asking somebody riding a donkey. Have you seen my cat? Oh, it looks like the boy is point the the person on the donkey donkey's pointing to something. Do you think it's another type of cat? What do you think it is, boys and girls? Well, it's, it, this is a puma. Definitely too big for a regular cat. This is not my cat. So the boy is now asking somebody who's Native American. Have you seen my cat? It looks like the Native American individual is pointing to something. What do you think it is? Is it another cat? What type of cat do you think it is? Well, it looks like the boy is, has seen a cheetah. This is not my cat. So now the boy is asking two women carrying fruit. Have you seen my cat? And it looks like one of the women is pointing to something. What do you think it is, boys and girls? Could it finally be his cat, or is it another type of cat? It looks like the boy is traveling all around the world. Looks like he's been to the west, to the east, to Mexico, to, to even, looks like he's in Africa now. But he's like all around the world. But it looks like he saw a panther. This is not my cat. Now he's asking a grown up who lives in the desert. Have you seen my cat? And it looks like the person's pointing to something. Oh, this cat here was a jaguar, not a cheetah. I made a mistake. Sorry. But the next cat is a cheetah. This is not my cat. So now the boy is asking another adult. Have you seen my cat? And the grown up's pointing to something. Looks like he may be in India now. What type of cat do you think he'll see in India? It looks like it's going to be a tiger. There's a lot, I think there's, a, there's tigers in India. This is 
is not my cat. So now he's asking what looks like to be a king and his attendant. Looks like he may be in Europe now. He's going all over the world. Have you seen my cat? And it looks like the attendant is pointing to something. What do you think? Is it going to be another big wild cat? Looks like... Looks like it's a cat, regular cat, but a very fancy breed of cat. This cat is called a Persian cat. And these cats are very expensive. This is not my cat. Oh no, it looks like the boy is sad. Where is my cat? So it looks like he, it looks like he's back home. And it looks like that they, they could be just regular grown-ups or they could be his parents. Don't know, but have you seen my cat? And it looks like the man is pointing to something. What do you think? Is it fine? Can he, will he finally find his cat? Let's see. <gasps> this is my cat. And take a look, boys and girls. What do you think? What are those? Those look like kittens. So the boy's cat was hiding to have her kittens. Isn't that great? So he found his cat after all, along with a bunch of other little cats. And if you want to remember the types of cats the boy has seen, Eric Carl gladly put a page with all the different types of cats out there and their names. But anyway, I hope that was a great story. Well, that's a, well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the story, boys and girls, as well as the other one. I certainly enjoyed reading those stories to you. But with that being said, it's time to move on to our activity. And it's going to be a fun little activity. We're going to play something called Musical Alphabet. Which will help you get your help you practice your movement skills, as well as help you remember your letters, capital and lowercase. So, give me a few minutes, and we're gonna move to the game to the area where our game is. So, hold on one second, boys and girls, and we will be right back. All right, boys and girls. So, as you can see. Here is my space. Now, before, I be before we begin the program or the, or the game, I'm going to tell you that this activity is a modified version of one that I found on the website, No Time for Flashcards. So, if you're interested in this activity as well as any other similar activities, please click on the web link in the video description. Now, prior so, when you register for this program, you should have received your craft kit. And in those was 26 construction paper cards with, cap with the capital letters A through Z, as you see over here, as well as tw 26 cards, not 25, I'm sorry, 26 cards, construction paper cards with the lowercase letters A through Z. Now, To play the game, here's what you here's how you're gonna set up parents. The first thing is 
find a spot that's very safe, maybe like a carpet or a soft floor. Not with a very, not with a finish that's easily, that can easily come off. But something like a soft floor or a carpet and with furniture moved out of the way. You need a sa safe spot for this game, especially if you have more than one small child playing the game. But, so, you're going to, so once you have your space ready, oh, if you have like soft padding outdoors, you can even play the game outdoors if you like. But only if it's safe. No, do not do this on a hard, play this game on a hard surface, parents. But what you do is you take your letters. And you don't even have to use all of them if you don't have enough room for them. Just use some of them if you prefer. Take your letters and tape them in random spots in the area that you want to play the game in. Mine are a little bit more cramped because I don't, we don't have a lot of room here. And it doesn't matter. Since I'm only demonstrating it, I am gonna, I'll be the one, I'm the only one playing. So, once you have your letters scattered around, the first thing you're going to do, parents, is have your child find the letter that starts their first, that's the first letter in their first name. So, I'm Miss Brianne, and my name begins with the letter B. So, I'm going to find the B. And I'm going to stand right on it. So once your child is in their spot, which is the first letter in their, that begins their first name, what you're going to do is play music. Now I'm going to be ringing a bell. I'm not going to, as my music, I'm not going to be playing actual music. But you can play whatever music you want that gets your child dancing. So, what you do is you play, start the music and have your child dance. They can do whatever they want. And you're just going to keep going for a little while. And then after a minute or two, stop the music. And once you stop the music, so once they, the music stops, they freeze right where they are. And then you show them a card with a lowercase letter. In this instance, it's the lowercase letter K. And the goal, what you do is find the capital letter. Now, to make it easy, I put the lowercase letters in the same color as the capital letters, which may make, make it a little bit easier for your child to find. But say, find the capital letter. And so what, what they do is they look for the letter, and then they stand on it. So they go find the capital letter of this and stand on it. And then for fun, you can ask them, what letter is this? and they tell you. And if your child knows their letter sounds, you can actually ask what sound the letter makes. Or if they know words that begin with the letter K, you can ask them for that as well. This is not a winning or losing game. Nobody's a winner, nobody's a loser. This is just a game for fun. And then they start at their letter. Or you can either have them stay at the letter they are, or Go back to the letter that begins with their first name, play the music again, and have them dance. Then you stop after a minute or so, Take, show them another letter, and have them find the capital. So find the capital of this letter 
and they stand on, on the, le the letter, and then you ask, what letter is this? R. And depending on their skills, what sound does the R make? Er. What begins with the letter R? Run. Then, like I said, you can have them stay on the letter they're at now, or go back to the letter that begins with their first name. And again, play the music and have them dance. After a minute, stop. Have them freeze where they are. Pull out another lowercase letter and ask them to find the capital of this letter. So they find the capital letter M, stand on it, and then you can ask what letter it is. Letter M. And what sound does it make? Mmm. What begins with the letter M? Mud. And you just keep going until... And you just keep going, repeat this as many times as you and your child would like. But it's a fun game, it's a fun way to remember your letters. And it, who doesn't like dancing to music, huh, boys and girls? But anyway, that's the musical alphabet game. And all, I certainly hope you enjoyed the little demonstration. I certainly enjoyed it. And also in your kit, there are worksheets when you're done playing the game that you can complete at your own convenience. But anyway, I hope you had a good time today, boys and girls. I certainly had a good time. I am looking forward to next month's session. But until then, this is Miss Brianne saying take good care of yourselves, have a great day, and I'll see you soon.